Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. 21 with your North Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, wasn't around most of last week. You know, we're into summertime now. I got three little guys, so we're running around doing all the crazy stuff. They wrapped up their soccer camp tonight. Uh, but I couldn't take it anymore. I had to get up and going. Uh, I'm feeling that this North Carolina team, like, look, look at the talent. It's all over the place. We're coming off a national championship. Coming into this 2037 season, ranked number one in the preseason. So I mean, we're on a roll here. I'm ready, like, we're getting close to the time where we're going to start threatening to go undefeated. I don't know if we've got enough experience at point guard, but we've got so much talent that might uh, override uh, that, that bit of depth issue that we may have there. So real quick, I, I took a look at the roster before I came up, but I want to get a quick feel. So Nick Rogers is a senior. That's our only scholarship senior. So do we only have the one scholarship? I didn't look at this before we went. Dun, dun, dun. Not sure. All right. Unsure about that. <laughs> Chris says I'm back. I didn't really go away. I just got busy for a minute. Still very much here. I wanted to stream all last week and I just couldn't get to it. So let's see. We we know Nick Rogers is going to leave. Uh, I can, I think Matt Jordan. Yeah, he's... He could stick around, but we got to go on the assumption that he's probably gone. I think Sir Penn could be, or well, no, he's probably also right in that same range. I mean, we're really we we don't have the scholarships to get crazy here. You know, we'll probably I assume we're losing at least one, if not two, big guys. Eddie Grove is certainly a one and done, ranked eighth nationally. He was very highly thought of in camp, so uh, we want to get at least one, if not two, guys on the inside, and then. Maybe a guard or a small forward after that. Let's see. What is the scholarship situation? We do have three scholarships, so cool. So, yeah, we can just go, like, maybe center power forward and then some some type of guard. But <laughs> Chuck's dust in the brush. Brushing the dust off the Twitch account. Yeah, you got to get it done, man. So, I mean, we'll just jump right into it, as we always do here with the recruiting. And uh, while I get all this set up, I'm sure that people will be coming in. And then, obviously, at this point, like, we got so much talent. Like, landing talented players isn't, uh, I don't think, quite as entertaining anymore. I mean, it's still f fun to do. But, uh, you know, the, the real excitement is going to be once we jump into the season and see... Oh, man, desperately short on point guard talent this year. Uh, the real entertainment is going to be once we jump into the season, start playing games, see if we can go undefeated, and if we can't, see if we can grab uh, ACC championships and national championships. Wow. It's really, really light at the guard position for talent this year. What is going on? Okay. Uh, here we go. Plenty of small forwards interested. Which leads me to believe that uh, one of those small forward recruits that we have will probably go early. But that's not anything guaranteed. It's just a theory. And we're really light across the board, it feels like. Ooh, number one overall is interested, though. Well, Stuart Ricks. We'll see how he holds up. I feel like we've hardly had any four-star guys with any real interest at all. Finally, a couple here. Once we got to the inside guys, grabbed a couple of them. Hopefully, these guys actually have good camps. Oh, man, we're loaded here at center. Uh, yeah, hopefully, these guys have good camps because we don't have a ton of targets. So, we're going to be pretty limited. All right, so we got 42 guys. That's decent. Let's get over on our call watch list, start getting some of these guys in on some uh, 
on campus visits get some of these camps going. We'll see what we got as always we'll try to get through recruiting relatively quickly so that uh you know we can jump right into those games i want to see i'm ready to smash some records you know you, you build a team during the recruiting season but you don't smash records until you're actually out there on the court and this team the biggest thing that we're going to have to do on this one is figure out this depth chart and i looked at it briefly before uh before i went live so i got an idea a little bit of what i want to do see how these camps went all right chris brand already with awesome time stuart ricks the number one prospect overall with an awesome time on his visit that's good to see all right oh no jason mann marcus davis eddie ducarm he does does not have any interest in us so that's lame uh we can always add him to the list because he's got a decent gpa He's in Virginia, so that's going to be within our region. Uh, so, I mean, we can always add him to the list and give it a go. You never know. Maybe you get lucky with a decent visit. All right, so he's added in. None of these other guys are actually in region. Let's see how things went down here. Gomes and, ooh, Dexter Murray in state. Also, no interest. Like, what is up? These four-star guys with the no interest. We're going to add you to the list, too, my man. Host you. I usually don't... You know, we can go ahead and scout you live as well. It's super cheap to go in state. And then uh, Gomes, he is interested. He is on the list. So let's make sure and go ahead and knock that one out. So those will be our visits for this week. Handful of our guys in Vegas really man mcgee seymour that's basically our entire list right man mcgee seymour was jonathan thompson also in there no jonathan thompson the only one that didn't make the top five out in vegas so looks like the guys we had out in vegas doing good <laughs> chuck says he likes to watch the recruiting so that he can pretend that he has this level of interest uh you know it's just like i'm a I'm in North Carolina. When I was at Missouri, the interest was lower. When I was at Bellarmine, the interest was lower. So it's all um, a moving target. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you in, in the uh, chat watching the stream here live with us on a beautiful Thursday night. So we got those visits set up. Let's see how they go. Get another little bit of camp info going on here. Gomes had an awesome time. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So at least we generated some interest in those other guys. All right, so the only one we have in Houston is Roland Bailey. And how he was not top five. In Chicago, we got Cyrus, Fall, Tubbs, and Smith. Tubbs, Cyrus. All right, so we got at least two in there. A lot of big men. And we got a lot of, we had a lot of big men that were interested, and they're all doing very well in these camps. So it's kind of terrifying what our guard position may look like. But uh, on the inside, we're looking stout. Oh, so yeah, we got Gomes up to up to warm. That's good. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we want to do here? Top five. It's a host and a scout. Top twenty-five. That's the same. MVP at Indy and Vegas. Jason Mann, the center. Uh, we know we're interested here, but let's wait and see if he's interested in us. We'll get through this. We'll hit this dead period. We'll get all of our camp information, trim these lists, and then we'll be rolling on recruiting. <laughs> Jay Slim says he was having withdrawals. Dude, I was having withdrawals too. I, I was like shaking every night. I'm like, maybe I can do a stream tonight. My wife just looks at me weird, and it's like, you know, too late, and the kids are all insane. Uh, so it, it just wasn't working out. But trust me, I was having the same withdrawal issues that anybody else was. Very much ready to just roll off about a dozen seasons through this. See, see if we can't knock out John Wooden. Like, let's just put a big trophy of cards up there at the top of whatever, uh, whatever you put trophies on the top of, right? Cool visit. Awesome visit for Weathers. Okay, okay. Logan and Hankins at Memphis. 
neither of them showed up in the top five. And then a whole slew of our guys here in the Big Apple. Bruce Ress, yeah, he looks like he was probably on our list. So let's go ahead and we know we want to bring him in. Uh, we've got Stuart Ricks, who was top 10 at Indy. He's the number one recruit in the country. So let's go ahead and open up his info there. All right. Let's go position by position. Get rid of anybody who was lame at camp. Top 25 at Indy. Good to go. Decent at the Big Apple. All right, so that's not ideal. No. If that's somebody I would keep. Like in our multiplayer league, I would probably keep this guy around. Uh, here, we don't need a, any decent regional campers. Top five at Vegas. Good to go. Top five at Chicago. Didn't stand out. No. Eddie Brown, you're gone. All right, so we've got just bare bones prospects at the point guard position there. So we got working with us at shooting guard. Didn't stand out at Indy and then didn't even go to the other one. So that's a no. That's a hard pass from me. Didn't stand out at Indy. Didn't attend another camp. All right, you're solid. We definitely know that. Decent at Big Apple? Nope. Decent at Big Apple? Nope. We're going to have like four guards. Didn't stand out. Top 25 at Big Apple. So that's it. That's decent. That's decent. All right, so, yeah, we're going to be very short on guards. But we only need one, so, you know, it kind of works out for us. We know we're into this guy. Hardworking kid. We don't have a camp note on him, but we know we pulled him from uh, one of the camp results, so we know he's good to go. Top 10, yes. Decent at Indy, that's good enough. Decent at Memphis is not good enough. Didn't stand out. Bad work ethic, absolutely not. Good luck to you, Jonathan Thompson. Thompson, it won't be here. Uh, same for Theo Dukes. Same for Shea Bailey. We are trimming the list. Hardworking kid, top 10 at Indy. Oh, yeah, Ricks, we know he's good to go. Uh -uh, nope, nope, nope. Lamont King's good. Walter Fall. You can stick around. Reed Hill. Go elsewhere, sir. Ryan Simmons. You go wherever Reed Hill goes. You're fine. No, absolutely not. All right. And now the centers. So we'll, and pretty much all these guys ought to be good to go. Their names were everywhere. There's MVP, MVP, MVP. Like, there's a lot of talent at center. We're definitely going on a center this year. Uh, Gomes, we pulled him off of a list. All right, didn't stand out at Indy. He's top 15 in the country. So, uh, to me, these guys, even if he's talented, he's going to be one and done, and he's not going to be talented enough for me to deal with that. You know what I mean? So, I don't, I don't care for those sort of things. Like, those guys, if they didn't stand out at Indy, but they're at least, like, top 25 at a regional camp, and they were, like, you know, 20, 24th, 23rd, something like that, where they might stick around a few years. Yeah, sure, I'll give you a go. But, like, like this guy, this is close. Like, eh, maybe. But uh, there's too much other talent at center. If this were a point guard or a shooting guard right now where I'm more limited, I would not be removing him from the list. But I'm removing him from the list right there. Oh, what's up? We got Aaron in the house. What's up, buddy? Uh, did we deal with Thomas Sanders? Didn't stand out. I don't remember if I did or not, but we're going to cut him off. Seymour, top five at Vegas. He's fine. Decent at Indy, top ten at Chicago. Yep. Peter Spittler. He's top ten in the Big Apple. Top ten in the Big Apple. Decent. Eh. All right, so we got our list down to 25 players. We got our call watch list set up. We can just go all positions. And now that we got this set up, we can blow right through this. Just visit every one of them because you can visit 30 players before you get to the in-home visits. So at this point, uh, we will go live with Rick's man and 
God, uh, Donnie Cross. How high was he? Top 25 at Indy? Yeah. What else we got? Bruce Ress. I think I like him, right? MVP at Big Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce Ress. We're on him. But yeah, we can blow through these and just visit every one of them. We know every one of these guys. Anybody on this on that's still on our call and watch list, we know are good to go. I don't even have to check emails. I don't need to check anything. We're just going home visits. Staying live with Ricks. Staying live with Man. Staying live with Bruce Ress. <laughs> Somebody knows how to play the game. Uh, I, I do all right with it in single player. In multiplayer, I, I think I'm still clueless. Well, I take that back. My Louisville team is going to be very solid next year, depending on how that center bounces back from his injury. But um, So, I mean, I've got an idea what's going on in multiplayer. But it, uh, in multiplayer, it takes two things. you got to know what you're doing, and you got to get a little bit lucky here and there. So... I uh, haven't had my lucky break yet, but we'll get there, I'm sure, eventually, one day. I'll, I will have my time in the sun eventually, uh, one way or the other, because I'll just stick around longer than everybody else. You know, everybody else will get tired of it, and I'll be here in, like, you know, the 78th season. Like, ah, I finally won it. So, I'm not going anywhere, guys. Got all our visits, yeah. All right, so we're on August 7th here in about two weeks. We'll get our top 10 list and see if we can't zero in on who we definitely want to be going after. Gomes, we can get you a live visit as well. Chris Brand, yeah, maybe. Why not? Let's get a couple of these unlocked, a couple more of these unlocked. Uh, we already got Rick's. I don't think that we've gotten Jason Mann. And this is the nice thing about having the coach that's maxed out, is you're not getting hung up on when you do this. Let's get Gomes. Ooh, I like Gomes. Look at this. So, hold on. All right, so look at Rash Rashawn Gomes. Not only are we number one on his list and hot, he's a five-star guy. He was... Where was he? He was... One of those, he didn't have interest in us at first. He did well at one of the camps, and we pulled him off of one of those emails. So I have to imagine that it was the big Apple camp. But it could have been... No, it might have been one of the national camps, actually. Yeah, Rashawn Gomes was one of the top five players at uh, East Coast Jam. So not only are we number one on his list... But look at this. You gotta love a 7'3, 300 pounder on the inside. Like, that's a man. Look at, who's stopping this guy on the inside? Look at those ratings. Nobody. Nobody. 7'3. My word. Rashawn Gomes. So, uh, kind of digging that for sure. All right, we got all our visits and everything set up for this week. Gomes might be our first offer. We shall see. Oh, we already had him in? Yeah. All right, no live visits are available. Okay. Uh, hold on. So, Gomes, we got him unlocked. Eddie du Ducarm? Whatever it is. Let's get him unlocked as well. Right now we're not on his list. That's all right. We'll get around. He has eight blocks a game. Gomes does. <laughs> well, I mean, Stuart Ricks has 7.2. Jason Mann, 7.1. I mean, a, a lot of them are around 7. Nobody's quite touching 8, though. Four steals a game. That's nice. That's nice. So, but yeah, 7-3. I mean, that, that's just interesting, right? You got to like a guy like that. Um, all right, let's advance. I think we actually only have like two more guys for in-homes. One more guy for an in-home. Just this guy, Chris Braxton. 
All right, so we got a lot of interest on this page. It's a lot of big men. We have no interest in guards. Look at this. If we go over here to guards, ugh, <laughs> almost nothing. Bruce Ress, kind of interested. Not really. We're in his top 10. Um, you know, but we've got a lot of good young guards. The problem that we're going to have with guards is if we have any kind of mass exodus through either transfer or going pro early. Shy of that, we could be all right at guard. And so maybe that's why we're not getting a ton of interest. I uh, can't be certain. So, you know, all these other positions, we got a decent amount of interest. So let's take a look here. Uh, all of these guys, you got to assume that they're all one and done. So let's just grab, all right, top 10 at Indy. And we're number two on his list. Number four for Weathers. He was top 25 at Indy. So I like the first one better. And here we are, number four on Souders. Listen, he was just decent. So Chris Brand is probably, at this point, our best option at the small forward position. So let's get everything unlocked on him. We're in the top three there. Now let's check out the power. Oh, yeah, I offered him. Check out the power forwards. Ricks is actually the only one that we're hot on. He was top ten at Indy. We're number two on his list, so that's definitely an offer. He's already unlocked. Good to go for Ricks. And now at the center position, I mean, I think we're, I mean, I assume that the chat all agrees with me. We're all in on Gomes, right? Oh, UCLA's now passed me up. Okay, we, that makes us at least look at the other two. All right, so Derek Tubbs, now Derek Tubbs was actually top five at Indy, MVP at Chicago. Gomes was top five at East Coast Jam, and we don't have a note on him from a regional camp. So that's actually slightly in Tubbs' favor. And then with Chambers, we're hot, but we're much lower. So, I mean, between these two guys... I mean, it's close. I think that Tubbs is probably the smarter one to go after. I think Tubbs is the smarter one to go after, but man, <laughs> Gomes would just be really fun, so I'm going to do it, right? Uh, and like, Tubbs is virtually, I mean, he's a lot to go in uh, one and done. Gomes is most likely one and done. Every now and then you get one of these guys in this range that'll hang around. I'd say it's like 90% that he's gone, but uh, better chance of him sticking around than Tubbs. So this, yeah, I think we go Gomes. Uh, just because it's, it's more fun this way, right? Like, they're both excellent players. We got about the same chance of landing either one of them. Even if Tubbs is slightly better in some ways, Gomes is going to be just fine. I couldn't be more happy with these three offers. Uh, we just have to hope that... Oh, we got the Norton candidates. Let's see. How did we do here? One, two, three, four, five, six. We got seven Norton Award candidates. The top one being Eddie Grove checking in at number eight. Matt Jordan right behind him, number nine. We're going to have to replace both of those guys, I'm pretty sure. Then Claggett at 11. I'm, we're probably replacing him as well. Uh, that's why we've got the three offers out that we do. Uh, Daryl Willie could stick around. And so, like, this is the kind of guy, ranked number 22. So, these are the kind of guys that, like, they're 50-50 almost every year. The first year, maybe they're more like 40-60-ish, but maybe 50-50. Uh, I just think these guys are 50-50 every year. They could go. They could be one and dones. They could be four-year players. They're most likely a two- or three-year player. You never really know. Uh, Morris at 18. Look. All right, so if we just start, if we just cut it off, top 25. North Carolina has one, two, three, four, five, six of the top 25 Norton Award candidates. Obviously, these guys are absolutely going to cannibalize each other. Uh, if any of them are a standout, they might have a shot, but still probably not. So I'm not worried so much about who actually wins it in the end, but the fact that they're all getting nominated is really quite interesting. So we should be good to go. That's why I say like this team, you're getting to the point where we're going to start threatening to go undefeated for certain. You can't ever guarantee it. I mean, you got to be, not only do you have to be extremely talented to go undefeated, but you got to get real lucky too. 
I've only done it once, and I've played hundreds of seasons. I've played dozens of seasons with Blue Blood programs like this, dozens of seasons with you know top-notch rosters like this, and I've only actually gone undefeated one time. It's very, very rare. But it can happen. So, uh, we've we've got all the info we need. We can just skip right on ahead. Hopefully we don't lose any of these guys before we uh, get a chance to get into the in-home visits. All right. In-home visits it is. We will, I guess we'll, we'll give Tubbs that other visit. He wants a school prestige. Give the man what he wants. Gomes, also into school prestige. Uh, Ricks. Mm, same deal. I mean, he's up there with Coach Discipline, too, but I'm pretty sure we have like 100 prestige right now. So we're going to milk that for all it's worth. Joey Underwood went elsewhere. Chris Brand, definitely school prestige. All right, <laughs> let's see how this goes. I think we can get it. We're getting at least one of these guys, maybe two. All three would be a long shot, but it, it could happen. We got two decisions. Let's see what they say. Ricks is coming to North Carolina. That's good. Chris Brand also coming to North Carolina. So we're looking good. Two for two so far. Now we just got to work out the center position. So let's see what we got here. Uh, that's a small forward. Center. All right, so Jason Mann, who was actually the best player in the country, and he is going to UCLA. So they beat us. They were beating us out at the last minute there. All right, so Georgetown has leaped ahead for Tubbs. We're going to visit him and talk about prestige some more. With Gomes, Villanova is ahead of us. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, and we need to be all over these guys as well. Top 25 at Indy. Yeah, let's... Uh, pop the rest of this open. See what you're into. Nia Seymour. He's most into facilities. Boom. And Chris Smith. Top 10 at Chicago. Decent at Indy. Spittler. Decent at Indy. Top 10 at the Big Apple. So, let's see. We're not in his top 10. We're not in his top 10. Let's go for the regional player. And he's into location. So... That's good both ways. So let's see. Hopefully we can grab Gomes, because if not, we're going to have a very difficult time at center, I feel. A couple of nice ranked games here in the out-of-conference schedule, all of them at home. Only one decent road game. Let's see if we can... Uh, do we want to throw in a tough road game? I mean, if we're going to try for an undefeated season, part of it would make sense to make this as easy as possible, but the other part... Makes it more legit if we, like... Oh, yeah, we got to do Indiana because Indiana's the last team that's actually gone undefeated. So if you want to go undefeated, if you want to, like, throw that weight around, have that swagger, you got to go through Bloomington, Indiana, and IU. So we'll throw in a road game at the Hoosiers uh, just because it's the only road game on our schedule, so I don't really have the ability to make any other road games. You can change who you're playing on any of those Oh, there we go, and we got Rashawn Gomes as well. So we landed all three of our top targets. Tubbs headed off to Sparty. All right, so we're good to go. We could take a quick look at that recruiting class if you want to, but, I mean, it's three of the top 12 players in the country. Gomes, the monster, 7'3", 307-pound center. Uh, I mean, so I mean, we're just in absolute reload territory at this point. We don't need any of the emails that we have. We can delete all of this. Uh, we can head right into the season. The only thing we need to do prior to that is get our depth chart squared away. So, I uh, mentioned this a bit at the beginning. I did go through my roster and took a look just to see like who was really into playing time. And we actually only have one player that's really going to be pissed off if he doesn't get playing time, and that's Ray Calhoun. Uh, Ray Calhoun's a sophomore. He understands what we're running. He's been around for a year. Uh, 
Now, I am a little bit loath to pull Morris out of this starting position because I'm pretty sure he ran the point last year and we won a national championship with it. So I hate to take a starter off a national championship team and bench him, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, just because like, I, I would like to keep as many of these guys intact as possible, and I am going to cut down on these minutes. Uh, I'll probably play Calhoun a little bit heavier than the rest just because I know he wants the minutes. Eddie Grove, Jordan, yep, that's all perfect. Then Harris, uh, Serpin, no, Morris will be up there. Rogers ahead of Dodd. Mansell will be the small four, so let's see, point. Uh, and, ooh, who do we want the other big man to be? All right, let's take a look at this. Because we do really only have Jordan as a center. Uh, Wilkes is a walk-on, so we need one of these power forwards, actually, to play center. So we're not all that deep at, on the inside, now that I look at it. So that's kind of interesting. We know we want Grove and Jordan starting. Let's see. As far as Dodd and Rogers, what are the differences? Dodd's a little bit better of a shooter on the inside and outside. Rogers hits the free throws. Dodd's a little bit better scorer. And they're very, Dodd's better at blocking. And they're very, very similar players. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, size-wise, Dodd is 6'8", Rogers 6'7". Yeah, we're going to set up Dodd as our backup center. So take him off the small forward. I don't want him playing in that position. Rogers, Mansell, Dodd, and then Serpin. Yeah, this is actually exactly what I want as far as the depth chart goes. Let the AI suggest a matrix, see what it goes with. Uh, and then, all right, so Calhoun, oh, let me think about this. Calhoun, we're all right with 30 minutes, I suppose. Everybody else, we're going to tone down a little bit. Two, three, two, three. What are we doing here? Uh, all right, that's a little bit more like it. All right, we definitely want to get more some more minutes because uh, we're actually going to get him a little bit more than that as well. All right, so 14 minutes. Just, I mean, he started on a national championship team. You can't take it. You can't just straight up take that away from him. Yeah, neither one of them are all that heavy, but, I mean, it's college. It's not the NBA. I mean, uh, they'll survive, I'm quite sure. Plus, they're only like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 200 pounds, so they'll make it. Uh, and I'm really going to try to limit these starters minutes because we're cranking all those coach philosophies to the absolute max promise you that let's get a couple minutes rest there then a couple more here kind of split that out so that goes let's see uh power forward power forward all right That'll be good for Rodgers. He's not going to be playing the small forward time. All right. So that really, I mean, Harris is not playing. All right. Because we, we want Calhoun to get at least 30 minutes. I think he'll get pissed if he doesn't get at least that. Everybody else is being reasonable about minutes, so I think if we do it like this, and then we come over here and take a look, offensive pace, we're cranking that up even faster. Defensive intensity, we're taking up even higher, because like we're completely, we can just rotate. We don't care at all. Full court defense, we're cranking it higher. Putting all that to the max. Oh, we're going to move this player rotation. I think the minutes thing matters more than this. But we're going with an extremely deep player rotation. We just want to go like... This ought to be like that uh, early 90s Arkansas, 40 minutes of hell. Only with like 
nothing but McDonald's All-Americans. This should be an absolute, like this team, it should be the highest scoring team in the country. They're going to have some of the highest uh, advanced statistics for like pace and those sorts of things. Like this is going to be, this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a fun one. Some of that stuff I, I post in the GM Games Discord where my teams have like 30, 35 point differentials on average throughout the season. Like that's what we're hoping for here. Obviously, you know, bad attitudes, injuries, those sorts of things can derail you at any time. But if we pull this off, this is going to be a really fun one. So I'm glad you guys are around for this tonight. I'm glad I could be doing it tonight. And the nice thing is, like, with the recruiting class that we just brought in, we're going to be able to do this again next stream. Uh, hopefully we can do this for a handful of streams until we just get absolutely bored to death with it and decide that we want to go back to, like, a small school and just retire or whatever. But uh, I'm feeling like sticking around in a blue blood, at least until we take down Wooden. Uh, so I hope you guys are down for that. We'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll, as always, I'll take feedback. Let's watch what starts happening here, though, because this is going to be nuts. I can't wait for this. It's super fun running through seasons like this on your own. I can't wait to run through a season like this on stream with everybody else. Because it's like I, I build these things and post them all the time. And, like, I never do it on stream. And so I think everybody might think I'm, like, full of it or something. But you guys have seen every minute of this uh, of this season, of this dynasty, whatever, this save file. Every minute, of it's, every minute of it has been up on stream. It's on Twitch at one point or another. Um, not, depth is not what I want to look at, strategy. Uh, it's all on YouTube. All right, motion triangle. Offensive set usage is the only other thing I wanted to look at. So Rodgers is very good with all of our sets. None of our other players really are. I mean, we got some in the 50s. That'll creep up towards 60s eventually. So that's good enough. So Jordan and Grove are both really low, though. Now, let's, let's back it to 60. I feel comfortable with 60. We should be fine there. All right, folks. I'm getting excited. I'm ready to get through some of these out-of-conference games. I'm definitely ready to see what happens when we head into Bloomington, face off with IU. Starting to get some scouting. Oh, we're, we're to the basketball. Here we go. We're playing in Simmon, baby, playing in Simmon. Let's see how it goes. Starting off versus Old Dominion. I think somebody just took over Old Dominion in uh, the multiplayer league today. So, uh, you know, hopefully for my sake, they don't pull the upset. And hopefully for your sake, I don't do anything dastardly here. Uh, but you never know. It could always go both ways. When you're starting off with a new team, you have expectations. You know, I think I know what this team's going to do. But you can't be sure until you play the game. 20-point win out of the gate. Matt Jordan, Justin Claggett, Eddie Grove. Ooh, that's one thing I need to take a quick look at as far as our scoring goes. All right, so we've got Morris. Oh, God, I hate having Morris on the bench when he's such a good scorer. But Daryl Willie's, like, so good. Claggett's so good. Eddie Grove. Grove and Willie. All right, so I was looking at this because I was halfway considering whether or not I should do like a focus inside or not with Grove and Jordan. But I mean, you got Morris, you got Willie, you got Claggett, Dodd. There, you can't do that. I do wish that the only guy on the team wanting so much playing time. Oh, uh, I might just have to piss him off. I don't know if he deserves it. Looking at these ratings. Fifty-four and fifty-two. How well does he know the sets? All right, so man, I I really think Kevin Harris is just flat out better. You know what I mean? And we've got some depth here. So tough, but. You,
know, I think I want to flip-flop these two. I think Harris is the better point guard. So Calhoun will get pissed off if he wants to transfer. That's fine. I'm just going to go through and straight up swap these point guard minutes. All right, so this is one of those things, like, I'll do it because we do have the depth and the ability to pull in new players. Uh, if Calhoun leaves, it's not the worst thing in the world. And I think this just gives us a better chance to be even slightly bit better. You know, if you want to... If you want to win championships and you want to hang banners, you got to put your best team out on the floor. So uh, I was a little bit torn on whether to give him the minutes or not just because he was demanding them. I'm not crazy about that, but I figured there was no good reason to make him mad because it was relatively even. But looking at it a second time, like he just clearly was not the best option. So. All right, let's see what we got here. Some Aggies and Tar Heels action. Oh, we got a we got one of these preseason tournaments. So I'm not sure what this little icon, which tournament this is, but we're on a neutral court here. We're not on our home floor, so these games are definitely up in the air. Uh, no guarantees here as we take on New Mexico State in a out of conference tournament. All right, Grove Clag, and there's Kevin Harris straight out of the gate. We insert him into the starting lineup in game two. He gets a double-double with points and assists, and we get a nice, easy win there over New Mexico State. So we expected to get that win. We hope to get that win, but yeah, you never want to jinx something like that. Oh, is this Michigan game? Is this a home game, or is this – this is in this tournament. So already we're playing the number 11 team in the country on a neutral court on November 18th. We're starting two freshmen – two, three freshmen? Hold on. What's Claggett? Is he a freshman or sophomore? He's a sophomore. So we're starting three sophomores and two freshmen. On a neutral court in November against a top 10 team. And let's see what happens. If anything beats us this year, it will definitely be lack of experience. But can we take out the Wolverines? Oh, yes, we can. Yes, sir, by 22. There's Kevin Harris again with 18 points. So already I feel much better with Harris at the point. I think that was the right decision, uh, even if it ends up with us losing a player that I'd really prefer not to lose. I think uh, we've got Charles Serpin as another guy uh, on the team that can play that position who's extremely talented. All those emails are the sounds of my letters of intent coming in. Now, apparently, the uh, yep, all three of them signed, so we're good to go there. No non-qualifiers. And so apparently something about our 20-point victory over uh, top 11 teams on neutral courts wasn't doing it for the voters. So they bumped us down to number two. But we once again take on, the for the second game in a row, we're going to be taking on the number 11 team in the country on a neutral court. Chuck says we're on cruise control. You know, we're on cruise control for, like, making the tournament, Right. But we're hoping for big things. We're hoping for historic things this year. So uh, let's see if we can keep it going against BYU. Oh, oh, 33. Oh, Tar Heels, don't hurt them. My word. Absolutely smoked BYU. Get out of here. That was ridiculous. Oh, look, we got a game against Missouri coming up. I didn't even see that on the schedule. They're going to see what they could have had had they upped their budget a little bit. I'd still be at Missouri had they upped their budget just a little bit. That was all we needed was the money to compete, to hire some assistant coaches and buy some better reports. Missouri would not do it. So let's see what the result is. We got a couple of games before then. We don't want the players looking ahead, but, you know, we're spectators. We can look ahead here. Tar Heels and the Owls, a top 10 matchup early in the season. And I believe this is going to be in the Dean Dome, and it is. So we won that non-conference tournament, but now we get back into, I guess, which regular season play, whatever. Uh, two undefeated teams. We do have the benefit of being the home team here, so hopefully that works out for us. Temple and North Carolina, yeah, it, I would say it worked out for us. 31 points. That was a, a top 10 matchup <laughs> against an undefeated team. And we won that one by 31 so, 
We're making things happen this year, folks. There's no other way to put it. There's going to be some beatdowns. Of course, nothing's guaranteed. But I guarantee there will be some beatdowns. That won't be the last time that something like that happens to a team. It might be the only time it happens to a top 10 team. But it won't be the last time it happens to somebody. That I can guarantee you. So now we get Marquette, 101 for the year. Woo! 10 point game. I kept it. Look, Josh Peterson went for 29. Rodgers and Mansell. Quentin Mansell, he's a backup, I believe. But, I mean, we just got talent all over the floor, so. Yeah, Claggett's the starter there. But Mansell came in and said, you know what? I can go for 21. Freshman out of Portsmouth, Virginia. So that's the good thing when you're this deep. Like, anybody can pop up. And you have to have that if you want to go for historic seasons, right? You've got to have a plan B, a plan C, probably a plan D. And at least once during the season, a plan E. So... Uh, maybe that was that time, you know, they, they were one and one, they came to our place and they played it within 10 and without the depth that we had and without that small forward, maybe that's a big fat L. Maybe we eat one there at, in the Dean Dome. All right, here it is. They, they wanted it. They got it. The Missouri Tigers <clears throat> coming to see what they once had once they, what they could have still had. Had they just opened up the pocketbook a little bit. I'm getting the boys fired up for this one, guys. Like, it's go time. Marquette put a scare into you. Don't let Missouri do it. Don't let them even get close. Make a point. Make a point. Oh, and we get two injuries out of that one. Missouri's like, you know what? Screw this cards guy. Go out there and kneecap him. All right, so they put down two of our players. Let's see how bad that is. And like I said, nothing's guaranteed in these seasons. Uh, at any time, injury can strike. And let's see how bad this is. Claggett, uh, something that's only 11 days. I can't see how bad it is. Bruce Calf, ooh, yeah, he might need to sit. Eddie Grove's sore shoulder, he's fine. All right, so Claggett, uh, let's see who we play. If we play anybody decent. Yeah, they definitely had the bounty out. Missouri was not messing around. <laughs> like, screw you, dude. All right, so we get Penn State, Northwestern, Arkansas. I think we can take these teams. Well, my boy's at 70%, though. He needs to sit. All right, so we'll do the same thing where we just swap, and then we go through and completely flip-flop the minutes. Okay. Eddie Grove's fine. He can keep the minutes he's playing, but we did need to make that swap. I think uh, Claggett can play a little bit. Uh, if we were playing any, like, top, top teams, like, uh, I would probably consider uh, letting Claggett just completely sit out and have that filled in by our depth at shooting guard and power forward. But I think against these types of teams, you know, we can get 10 minutes out of them and be all right. So the Nittany Lions coming into the Dean Dome, seeing if they can put a stop to the undefeated run that we're on so far this year. They cannot take care of business by 16. Eddie Grove, even with the bum shoulder, goes for 10. Kyle Dodd jumped in with 13 and 7. Nick Rogers, 8 and 2. All three of those were power forwards. And now the injury bug strikes again. Daryl Willey. Back spasms, 12 days. He'll be all right. But again, we're going to flip-flop these guys in flip-flop minutes. They're just, I feel like they're so interchangeable. All 
I hope I don't have to sit here and babysit injuries all season long. Hopefully, like there's just a little rash early season, we get through it and be done. Yeah, <laughs> random task. I think you're. Yeah, I think you're right. He said they uh, at the tip off. They didn't go for the ball. They just went and body check players. Uh, I think that was a hockey brawl. I think that was just all out beat down. So we're cruising into this game at IU. Uh, the, I mean, they're five and one, number twenty two in the country still. I think I hear an assistant coach somewhere in the basement, or else a dog. One or the other can't tell. Well, no, definitely an assistant coach. Maybe he'll pop around and say hello to the stream. Oh, yep, come here and say hello to the stream. No idea. You can look. He's looking for waffles. Dinner of champions. Uh, Northwestern coming in to play a hobbled North Carolina squad here in December of 2037. Woo, took care of them by 29. Matt Jordan, Eddie Grove, Daryl Morris. We just got players on players. These injuries, thankfully, none of them are long-term. None of them are, like, out. Like, they're all... Uh, the Claggett injury is the worst, but even he's still able to play. So we're getting through them. Grove may actually be healthy by now. His was only a seven-day injury. Yeah, he's healthy. Um, Claggett still has two days left. So I, I don't think he's going to be healthy for IU. And then Willie's still with six days left, so he definitely won't be healthy. But I'm good with Morris filling in for him on that game. Oh, no, no, no. He will be good for IU. Claggett will be good for IU. So that'll be perfect. So all we need to do is survive this game against Arkansas, and then we're almost back to healthy-ish. So the Razorbacks and the Tar Heels, 22 points. Kevin Harris, Eddie Grove. The usual suspects, getting things done. We're making it happen. 22 points. Assistant coach is over there playing a little pop a shot. All right, let's get to this next game, and then we'll go and take a look at the injuries and the roster and see what we need to swap around. Whew, UK Louisville. That looks like a pillow fight this year. Couldn't see who won it. Guys, we're uh, we're ten and zero. We ha I don't know. I don't think there's been a game within ten yet, has there? But this is our first really, really true test. So let's take a look at at the good old depth chart. Willie still back spasms for two more days. Claggett needs to be in the lineup. We need to swap that around. Oh, where's Mansell? All right, so Calhoun, Rogers, Mansell. Yeah, everything else is still correct. The only other one that we saw were Morris and Willie. And Willie's still a little bit banged up, so we're going to let Morris go here. I mean, he was, a, he was a starter on a national championship team. I'm sure he can start a game on the road against IU at that two position. All right, so this is the one. This is the one that we added to the schedule. Now, obviously, we're going to have tough games in the ACC. We're going to have a lot of road games against some very good teams in the ACC. But this is the one that we added, and we said, if you want to go undefeated, that road goes through Bloomington. And here we go. Number one, North Carolina versus number 20, Indiana Hoosiers. On the road, no problem. Nick Rogers, Justin Claggett, they said 23 points. IU. Go back to 1979. You, you got nothing here. You got nothing here. We are rolling, folks. Absolutely rolling. This is domination. Still on, like all the brutal recruiting, all that stuff still on, but you set yourself up right, you recruit right, and you can just absolutely dominate. You can blow teams out of the water in here. 
That's why y'all got to jump in. Anybody in here, I'd imagine y'all are all already in the multiplayer league, but anybody that's not already in the CBGM needs to jump in ASAP because that's the best way to play. Check out some of these emails. Hopefully they're not team incidents. They're not. Check out this depth chart because I believe Willie is healthy. He is, so let's swap him back out. Get these minutes swapped around again. All right, so once again, we're healthy. Not that we had to play anybody that wasn't absolute top-notch talent. But now we're back at the best of the best. So we survived that little rash of injuries early season. Let's hope it that was it for the injury bug, ideally. Mm. So now we got a home game against the Badgers, which... I, I mean, I feel good about it just because we've been doing well so far this season. But then we got to go on the road to number 13, Georgia Tech, who's 8-1. and one. And So right out of the gate, the ACC is really going to be a challenge. So let's see how this goes. You know, I mean, you, you can't go undefeated unless you win your first 11 games. We've won our first 11 games, and anything can happen from here. Yep. That's absolutely right. Chris is in chat right now talking about CBGM. 136 active teams, and every one of them's active. Chris clears it out. Like every couple of weeks, there's an event or another that if you're not active, you get cleared out. And everybody in there is active as could be right now. Uh, so you're not going to find a cooler multiplayer league. You're not going to find a better challenge. If you like college basketball, uh, if, I, I mean, obviously, like once you know what you're doing, you can kind of dominate the AI. Uh, you can't dominate in that, you, you just can't. Uh, so if you're looking for a challenge, uh, that's where it's at for sure. The Badgers coming into the Dean Dome, coming into Chapel Hill, North Carolina and Wisconsin. Taking care of business, 17 points. Matt Jordan, Kevin Harris, Daryl Willey, back from injury. He's full health. He's doing his thing. And uh, North Carolina is rolling right now. All right, so we had the tough, tough road game against IU. Now we're back at full strength, but right away we got to go and play a conference opponent on the road. And I mean, this is just brutal when you're trying, when you're hoping that maybe, possibly, you could win every single game. Games like this are terrifying. <laughs> I mean, because at any point you just have a bad game, especially when we're playing all freshmen and sophomores. Like we got one senior, Nick Rogers, who's a backup. Everybody else for the most part, are freshmen and sophomores. So we got an extremely young team trying to take them on the road and win conference games. Like, that's just brutal. I mean, if I had to guess, I still say we probably, like, if I was throwing out an over-under, I would say two and a half. Two and a half losses on the season, I still expect. Uh, I would, if we don't have any injuries, I would bet the under. Any injury, I'd bet the over. So I don't expect this to be an undefeated team, but you know, it's still on the board until it's not, right? It might end right here, though. <laughs> the Tar Heels and the Yellow Jackets in Atlanta. No, we keep going. Eight-point win. Justin Claggett, Eddie Girl, and Daryl Willey. So Claggett and Willey combined for 44 points there. To escape from Atlanta. That was our first game that we won by less than 10 on the season. Whew. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I keep it together before the game, but when you see the result and the reaction, hopefully you understand. Like when I say I'm terrified of games like that, I'm truly terrified of them. And uh, that was, whew. we made it. We made it out of that one. I mean, every road game does that to me. The home games, for the most part, like Florida State, nothing special. It's a home game. We should win it. Now, now when you're all when you're undefeated, every game is a little bit like. But a game like this, like you, if you win, it's just like guys, really. Or, I mean, if you lose, uh, that game against Georgia Tech, like that was a threat to our season. Not that every game isn't a threat. But that was one that I could see coming. This one, hopefully we hopefully we make it do, make it happen. Tar Heels and the Seminoles. On the hardwood, this is Tar Heels all day, every day. 
All day, every day. All day, every day, baby. All day, every day. 42 points. Daddy. All day, every day. What's up, buddy? Yeah. Put that hat on and come over here with me. My assistant coach found himself a coach's hat. He's going to come over and show it off for the stream. Come here, bub. Come here, show him this hat. Everybody in the family knows what's up. That's the Ville. And he's got his soccer shirt on from his soccer camp. And he's got a Walking Dead uh, Nerf uh, rifle. Bolt action. High five. All right. In this game, we're the Tar Heels. Say, go Tar Heels. Go Give me one of these drinks out of the fridge over there. Well, that's the bonus of having an assistant coach. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Jay Slim said the conference games on the road are so tough. 100%, man. They're absolutely brutal. Thank you, sir. I'm going to have to give you a promotion after this season. All right, so we're into January. We, Well, obviously, we made it through the non-conference undefeated. Uh, yeah, he, he's repping over there, isn't he? He's got the little mesh hat, the old, the, the new school L. He's got the Under Armour black shorts. So he's ready to go. All right, into January. Let's see if we can keep it rolling here against NC State Wolfpack. 7-3 and three overall, 0-1 in the ACC. We're sitting at 14-0 and 0 overall. Make it 15-0, and 0, but Matt Jordan suffered an injury. All right, so... Let's see how bad that is. Mm, bruised abdominal 20 days. So this one actually hurts quite a bit because we're certainly going to have some tough road games uh, in conference through this stretch. And this is the one position where we really didn't have a whole lot of depth. We have one walk-on as a backup. So I think that we just have to let Kyle Dodd jump in there and then well, what do we do? Hold on. We'll run Dodd and Grove and let Rogers back up both positions. Oh, he's so good at these uh at these offenses. But I do think Dodd's a better player, a better center. Okay. So we're going to move Dodd up into that starting center position. Let's swap these minutes straight up, and then we're probably going to... Um, you know, we're going to find some extra minutes for Dodd here, actually. And then we're probably also going to look for some extra minutes... No, Dodd is not a garbage anything. What is this? Serpent can play power forward for all I care. Uh, can Rogers play any more at the center position? Yes. So you can grab those minutes and these minutes. All right, so that gets Rogers on the court a little bit more. We'll have to work that out uh, once Jordan is healthy again, but I think that's a pretty good mix. Uh, <laughs> do you hear that? He's already asking about Jordan. Uh, one of the players on my team is named Matt Jordan. It's not Michael Jordan, though. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he thought I had Michael Jordan on my team, but but I am playing as a school that Michael Jordan went to college at. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? All right, he's fascinated now. All right, so Temple looks like a good team. It looks like we just beat the life out of them. Whew. This looks we're North Carolina Tar Heels. Looks like we've got a decent like. What, side are we? what do you mean? What's what, there is no side? I don't know what you're even talking about. What side is our team? See, like that and that. It switches every game. We'll always be the one that's this color that says North Carolina Tar Heels. All right, so a game on the road right away testing. Uh, what can we do on the inside without Jordan on the road? <laughs> yeah, the baseball player, that's right. Uh, all right, so let's see. You know, we've had some not terrible luck with injuries, uh, but I've had better seasons. So let's see with this injury, can we avoid the, you know, the Irish's luck at home? Can we get out of South Bend with our undefeated season intact? 
15 and 0 through January 6th. No, it comes crashing down to an end. And not only that, but Kyle Dodd suffered an injury in game as well. So, like, the injury bug has just devastated us. Can't get away from it. So, at this point, I guess we let Wilkes is awful. Of course, like, the position where we only had four players. We were so much depth everywhere else. Nothing really on the inside. And now it's biting us doubly. Um, you know, based on how bad Wilkes is, I think we just let this roll because we don't really have a whole lot of other options on the inside. So, I mean, we're not going undefeated. We're making the tournament either way. At this point, it doesn't really matter. We just need to get to tournament time. Yeah, luck of the Irish got us. And that's what I was saying. Like, if you want to try to go undefeated, everything has to break right. You got to have a team like this. You got to have depth like this. And you got to get lucky. And, you know, we didn't get lucky there. Uh, bad time for injuries to strike. Not only, like, to strike two of our four decent inside players. The one place that was really a weakness absolutely just got uh, crushed even harder with the injuries. And yeah, it happens. Uh, that's why nobody in real life has gone undefeated since 1979. And that's why I've only had one undefeated season in all the hundreds of seasons that I've played of this. Uh, regardless how many teams that I have that are you know, relatively stacked like this. So, there you have it. Uh, now we get a home game against Louisville, so it's going to make me, you know, coming right off of the loss, now it's going to give me the sentimental loss, even if we win, or if we lose, it's just another real loss. Hey, dude, could you please not be dribbling basketball in the background while I'm uh, doing this, because it's really loud. Can you watch me? Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's see if we can get back on the winning path here. Oh my God, 78 to 38. <laughs> well, well, I guess that was good. Jeez. Ooh, Gonzaga having a rough go of it, 10 and 8. Losing by 10 to, was that Pepperdine? All right, so I believe we played NC State at home early in the year. Well, or early. A week ago. A week and a half ago. Seems like forever ago. Like We played NC State like five injuries ago, but now we got to play them on the road. So let's see if we can avoid a second in-conference loss here. Yes, we can. Nice little 16-point win. Claggett, 20 and 15. We had a handful of double-doubles there. That was nice. 12 or 13 championships in 15 seasons. It was, and that was an AI team? But what were you doing? I hope you were at a small school. Yeah, the Irish doomed us. That's right. So, you know, your starter goes down, you try to put in a backup, and then you go on the road, and then the backup gets hurt in the game and can't finish it out. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a loss. That's a loss anywhere, anytime. So, it happens. Can't really do anything about it. You, you can't recruit it any better or design it any better. It's just you got to get lucky if you want to win them all. That's why it doesn't happen very often. All right, now on the road against Florida State. What was it? Florida State, Tallahassee. <clears throat> no, we're still ranked number one. That's nice. 17 and 1 on the season. Headed down to Florida State. Oh, put a beat down on the Seminoles. Claggett and Dodd. Doing good, good stuff. Take another look here at this depth chart. See, are we healthy yet? No. Four more days. Four more. Dodd is healthy. Four more days on Jordan, though. Now, yeah, if you're building up a school, then I'll allow that. If you had a, even a halfway decent school to allow 13 championships by one AI team, that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit much. But if you're a small school, I get it. 
Because Gonzaga, like, they do get on some rolls in the single-player games. So there's just not a whole lot of teams that can stop them. Like, maybe Kentucky if they do halfway decent. But they they seem kind of 50-50. Like, Gonzaga just sits out there in the West and dominates, and their coach never leaves. Like, Duke's problem is their coach always leaves. All right, we got Syracuse at home. Uh, 7-1 and one in the ACC, 6-1 and one in the ACC. Get out of here. Get out of our gym. And Daryl Willie has an injury. So, what is that? Six injury of the uh, it's, it's Willie's second injury of the year. And it's a torn ACL. He's out. He's done. Daryl Willie's gone. Good Lord. The injury bug has bitten us very, very hard. Cannot get away from it. And now Daryl Willie, done for the year. And that might be his career at North Carolina. I've spent more time in this screen on this stream than I ever have before. <sighs> All right, so Calhoun's got a decent relationship with us. Maybe this this gives us an opportunity to work Serpin in a little bit here and there. Yeah, let's keep it like that, I guess. God, it's so frustrating to lose guys like that. Uh, the good news is that wasn't one of the inside guys. Like, if one of the inside guys went down like that, we would be in. Uh, we would be in for it. Uh, with it being one of the guards, we do have you know quite a few other options there. But it is frustrating that it was Daryl Willie, who's one of the very best players that we had. So, we'll just see how it plays out. Nothing else you can do. Injuries happen all the time. Number one, North Carolina on the road against number two, Duke. So, it, you know, if... if I wish Willie would have stuck around for one more game. If you got to blow out your knee, can you at least hold it together until after you go on the road into Durham, North Carolina? But we got to go into Duke. Down our starting point guard, down you know one of our uh, one of our team leaders really, Daryl Willie, um, and now we got to go do it without him. So you know, let's see what happens. Two one loss teams, number one versus number two, North Carolina versus Duke. It doesn't get any bigger than this game right here, unless hardware is on the line. And to be honest, I mean, uh, I think a, a regular season conference title is on the line right here. I mean, this is a, you know, for these two teams, it's not so much a banner, but it's like another year that you put on the banner, right? But let's see what happens here. The Tar Heels and the Blue Devils. <laughs> Tar Heels, baby. Tar Heels. Oh, Dodd doing business. That's right. So now we're going to get Jordan back to full strength. So now our inside game is going to come around as long as, like, if the injuries die down, we can survive and we can still win some championships. We could still win the ACC. We could still win the national championship. Uh, the only thing we can't do as of right now is go undefeated. <laughs> what we can do is give Notre Dame a giant F you here shortly. They're 500 on the season. They had no business beating us. Uh, just the exact wrong time for the double injury to strike. All right, let's go get this switched around here. Get our inside game squared away. Jordan is the starter. Rogers, yeah, Rogers over Dodd. Let's see. Hmm. 
Mm -mm. All right, let's see how that works. The AI went undefeated four times. What in the world were they doing out there? That seems like a lot for the AI to go undefeated four times in 15 years. I mean, I've, they must have had a great run. Like, that's not only killer recruiting, but that's killer luck as well. I don't, outside of the undefeated season that I have, I don't know that I've ever seen another team go undefeated. At least in my games. I know, um, obviously, in other people's saves, there's undefeated teams here and there. But in my saves, it doesn't happen uh, too often. All right, let's see what we can get here. At home against Clemson. Woo, 30 points. My word. Big return for Matt Jordan. 19-7. and seven. Eddie Grove kicking in. Uh, so we're cruising, guys. We're cruising. 21-1. and one. No team incidents, anything like that. Let's see if we can blow the doors off of Notre Dame in a little bit of retribution here. This look at the Irish crap is only good in South Bend. You want to come down to Chapel Hill, you want to come into the Dean Dome, you can leave that luck um, back, on, back on your campus. Uh, it, it's no good here. It doesn't count here. Uh, hopefully obliterate him by like 50. Oh, UC looking good this year. All right, 20. I'll ta and clag it. All they do is injure our damn players. This is unbelievable, the injury problems we're having this year. What's wrong with him? Twisted ankle. Three weeks. God bless. Yeah, I mean, we're beating ranked teams by 30, but our players are absolutely paying the price. And I don't know, like, I, I did put the uh, full court pressure, the defensive intensity, all that stuff all the way up to the max. I don't know if that has anything to do with this. You know, it's... There's only been five or ten times that I've had teams set up like this that I could go this hard with and i don't remember having injury issues like this on any of the other ones so it's not a pattern to me yet uh, but I'll, I'll definitely keep an eye out and if it becomes a pattern then maybe you know i have to find some kind of sweet spot between running teams off the court and keeping my players on the court uh so i i don't know that that has anything to do with it but it is something that i'll you know after seeing this you know, I'm going to keep it in the back of my mind and be on the lookout for it. And anybody that has any similar experiences, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to learn from somebody else's mistakes instead of uh, insisting on making all the mistakes by myself. But I don't think it has anything to do with it. I think it's bad luck. I have had injury-ridden seasons like this before, like high intensity or not, lots of full court or not. Sometimes you just have a... You just, it doesn't work out in your favor, right? I mean, it happens. Ooh, that's quite the career there, random task. <laughs> Was that Mark Few at Gonzaga, I guess? All right, so Pitt trying to come down here uh, into our house. Not going to let this happen. No, sir. Uh-uh. Get out. Ooh, Ray Calhoun stepping up there. That was good to see. All right, so now we got a decent Virginia team coming in. They're 16 and 6, number 11 in the country. So what is this, the third, fourth time that we've played the number 11 team in the country? Each time it's been somebody different. So Claggett, the only one still, as, even as a quarterfinalist for the Norton. And he's not going to be very high. 22nd. So yeah, these guys just sort of cannibalize each other.
All right, we're in February 2038, sitting at 23 and one, 11 and one in the conference, trying to survive this barrage of injuries that we've undertaken. So far, Daryl Willie is the only one out for the entirety of the year. So let's see if we can just manage to avoid any other uh, travesties. <laughs> So, Virginia coming in. Nice top 15 team in the country. Dispatched with ease. 26 points. So, yeah, that, that's what we're doing now. <laughs> let's, let's take a look real quick. Yeah, so we're scoring almost 86 a game and only allowing 63 and a half. That's some serious business. Oh my god, with these super light colors, it's hard for me to even see the player impact estimates. Rogers with 10, Jordan with about 14, Eddie Grove. You know, I, I'm kind of concerned. Willie might have been uh, the main contributor in here. But also, we got a lot of other good backups that are doing well also. So, it's probably not all of it, but probably a portion of it. I wonder what that looked like before he got injured. I know he was a heck of a player for us last year. I mean, if there was... <clears throat> Obviously, we don't have a ton of depth on the inside, so I don't want any injuries there. But like, if there was an outside guy, if there was a guard that I wanted to... that I didn't want to lose, it was definitely Daryl Willey. But we'll see if we can get by without it. On the road at Miami, they look very average. Woo! They kept it closer than I would like for them to. But in the end, Eddie Grove, Matt Jordan, they did what they do. We won by 10. We keep moving along. I mean, it's a conference game on the road. We won by double digits. You can't complain about it, I don't guess. I need to figure out how to change the settings on my tablet device so that the screen doesn't lock after like 30 seconds. So I feel like I spend the whole stream sitting here doing this trying to keep chat active. Or I guess I could always just quit being cheap and buy a second monitor. Also an option. Alright, so on the road against BC, hopefully we can get this one taken care of. Well, we're getting real close to uh, players declaring for the draft, uh, ACC tournament, and then ultimately NCAA tournament. So it's getting to be crunch time here. Getting to be crunch time. I believe that we've won two national championships in the last three seasons. I'd have to go back and double check. Oh, nice little, uh, what, 17-point win there on the road against BC. I'll take that all day, every day. See what the depth chart is looking like right now. I can't even remember. Uh, Claggett still two more days on that ankle. Oh yeah, you got three monitors. That's absolutely you should feel like a god. You basically, are. Uh, I've actually got another monitor sitting over there. It's supposed to be for the kids, so I can put it up on this old PC, but. I still got to find a solution to get the old PC online. So I've only got two hard lines into the back of my modem. One of them's going to my um, like video player for the main floor, and the other one's going into this PC. And I'm not getting rid of either of those, so I'm gonna have to find some kind of wireless solution. And I just haven't taken the time to do it yet because the kids have their devices and whatever. So I could probably use that monitor until I figure that out. Which would at least give me something else to like read chat on. But you know, for now, I'll just keep swiping up like an idiot. 26 and 1. Whew. Oh, look at this ECU Temple game. 120 to 108. My word. All right, the Yellow Jackets come in. They gave us a go in Atlanta, but they look very average. And we run them off the court when they come into our place. Although, no standout performances necessarily from our guys. All right, for goodness sakes, let's get Claggett back into this lineup. 
hopefully he can get us. This game on the road against Syracuse is going to be pretty brutal. Definitely a very, very losable game here. <clears throat> I'd feel better if I had Daryl Willie, but, you know, we don't always get what we want. 15-1. Well, we got 16. We got four games left in conference play. This is probably our toughest regular season game left. These Zags definitely are not going undefeated anytime soon. 16 and 12 on the season for Gonzaga. Looking really bad for them. All right, here we go. On the road against the Cuse. Can we minimize the losses, or are we going to fall victim? And let me tell you, if there is any team that I fall victim to on the road with some regularity, it's definitely Syracuse in that 2-3 zone. It's very difficult. If I was like, if I was given odds on that game that we actually lost on the road against Notre Dame, I'd have said I figured I'd win 70-30, 75-25, something like that. On the road against the Syracuse team, shit, this is... 40-60 for a, like, I think Syracuse is more likely to beat us. At best, 50-50. I very much expect a loss here. Uh, this is a tough place to play. Especially when you're, especially when you're down a Norton Award winner. Uh, whatever, starting shooting guard on a national championship team, a Daryl Willey. Not, not many teams have a Daryl Willey, so I can just call it a Daryl Willey, I feel like. Uh, but this is going to be a tough game. Oh! In theory. Oh, so they went the let's not play basketball, let's just beat up Eddie Grove route. All right, so we won by 20, but do we still have a power forward? Great question. This is terrifying. All right, cool. Sprained ankle, he's fine. Uh, we should be able to get through these games without even changing our roster. And if we were still undefeated, I may change it. We're not, so I don't care. He'll be healthy by the time conference tournament play comes around, so I'm not going to bother with the. I've been in the roster page the entire daggone stream. I'm not going to do it again. We're just going to roll with it. He's 85%. He can, he can get out there and go. The depth chart page has a thing where it'll sub these guys out. Like you tell it what minutes you'd like them to play, but it's going to sub them out when they hit their percentages anyway, as far as their fatigue. So he'll he'll get subbed out. What was that? A little hiccup in the game engine. Oh, there we go. It was a little hiccup because it's like, what? Do we really want to do a, 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 a 44 point win here? Are we sure we're going for 44? Okay, okay, 44 point win. We're down a starter. A second starter is banged up, playing with a twisted ankle, and we still beat a conference team by 44 at home. Not, not that it was a good team, but we beat them by 44. That's just not fair. It's just not fair. So now we got to go on the road. And we, we embarrassed Louisville earlier in the season. I think like 79 to 38 or something ridiculous like that. Uh, going on the road here, a little bit shaky just because we're banged up. I mean, they're an average team. They could jump up and steal one. You never know. No, nothing guaranteed. We took care of business, but it was only eight points. So that was pretty, pretty respectable there. I'd say they were... They were targeting that date after the beatdown we put on them earlier in the season. All right, so now we're down to our last regular season game, and then we're straight into the postseason. Got to go on the road to Wake Forest, and they look atrocious. All right, nothing today. Sitting at 30 and 1. I mean, it, you know, it makes you feel a little bit bad. Like, oh, if we just could have won that one. 
But at the same time, it makes you feel good. Like, man, we're, we're winning a ton of games. We're blowing people off the court. And it also makes you really like, respect those undefeated seasons. Like, it, it makes you cherish it that much more. Like, that was pretty special. The, the one that I had, I had a game. Like, most of my games were just like this. Winning by 20, 30, even 40 points. But I had that one game that was like a two-point game. I mean, there's that one game a year, like, you're just going to play like trash. And you got to pull that one out if you want this one to be a zero. So, look at Leo Bush for Cincinnati. He might be an All-American candidate. All right, on the road at Wake Forest. Ah, oh, and we lose a second one on the road at Wake Forest. Can't get past the Demon Deacons on the road. So, those conference games on the road, they're no joke, even... Some crappy team like Wake Forest. I don't even think that was. I think that was their ninth win of the season. I don't even think that was their tenth win of the season. So we just couldn't pull it off. I mean, they they shot well from three, fifty-five percent. They shot well from everywhere, and we didn't from anywhere. So I mean, at the very least. I'm glad that we lost to Notre Dame earlier with the injury excuse because there was really no excuse for losing that one to Wake Forest. But uh, the good news is now we get onto neutral courts. We don't have to go on the road anymore. And nobody's going to want to come in uh, and play us on a neutral court. All right, let's see who's going pro here. Let's see exactly how much of this team we have to rebuild. Eddie Gro, Oh, Charles Serpin. That's a surprise. And then Daryl Willey. Okay. All right, so Matt Jordan is actually staying. Dodd is staying. Claggett is staying. Wow. I mean, we're still going to be just... Absolutely terrifying next year. Charles Sarpin's kind of surprising. No, I guess not. Okay. Yeah, we're still going to be terrifying next year. Let's see. Like, now that Will with Willie and Sarpin both going pro... Ray Calhoun being happy is a little bit more important to me, but he's still pretty happy. So that's all good. Kevin Harris, like we do we have any serious red faces that we care about? Prado, I don't care about you. Nick Rogers, you're a senior, you're fine. So I don't think we have anybody that's really a threat to transfer. So we should be pretty deep and pretty talented and pretty scary again next year. I'm good with this. We'll see how it plays out, but as of right now. Without anything unexpected, I'm good with this. All right, so let's get into this ACC tournament. Let's double check the roster. I've been changing it so often, I can't even remember if I got the right one set. Eddie Grove, he'll be healthy in seven days. We got Claggett in there. Okay, that's fine. Ugh, seven days. I really wish Grove was healthy for this ACC tournament. The good news is he'll be healthy for the, for the next bit. On a neutral court, though, if we have to play Duke, I guess I'll change it up. Otherwise, I think we can blow through this ACC tournament even with Grove at you know, 85%. I think. All right, so we got Miami first. We should be able to handle this in theory. Hunter one to fifty six. Yeah, we made it there. We made it there.
against Pitt. Yes, sir. 31 points. Morris Jordan Harris. Very nice work. And now, you know, if uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Syracuse and North Carolina for the ACC Championship. North Carolina by 21. Yeah, baby. ACC champs for, I think we're just winning it over and over at this point. Uh, not, not a whole lot of uh, ACC championship winners. Those were some beatdowns in the ACC tournament, my friends. Absolute beatdowns. All right. No shock. North Carolina, the number one overall seed. Got Georgetown, Syracuse, and IU also in the rally. In Chicago, it's Iowa State, Nevada, Washington, Wisconsin. There's Missouri checking in at a seven. UC and Nashville. UC's a dangerous looking team. Michigan, BYU, Oklahoma. And the Dukies in Oakland. Wyoming grabs a four seed. It's an interesting looking tournament. All right. That's right, Chuck. Start swinging that shirt around your head like a helicopter. Oh, we're making it happen. We're into the postseason. We hung another ACC, another ACC uh, banner, uh, another year on the on the banner, another trophy in the trophy case. But this is this is where the rubber meets the road, baby. NCAA tournament. We love to go undefeated, but that's just style points. NCAA championships is what matters. So we got to start off against Norfolk State. All right. Let's avoid the trap of Agalia. Don't lose to a 16 seed as a one. Don't you do it. No, they didn't. <laughs> They narrowly avoided that trap by 37 points. So, on to the second round, and now we got to play the Shockers. And I just I don't even like saying Shockers when I'm when I'm a one playing an eight seed in the second round. I don't like saying the word Shock. It's something about it. Oh, Arizona got off to the wrong foot there against Wisconsin. Okay, but let's see what we got. We should have the depth. We should have the play style. We should be able to take care of business here. Wichita State playing North Carolina for the rights to go to the Sweet 16. North Carolina taking care of business. 28-point victory. Cruising so far. Four more games to get where we want to go. All right, baby, on to the Sweet 16. Let's see what we get here. We get the Purdue Boilermakers. Where, I think Spider in the house? Oh, Missouri lost. Is that a is that a bad sign for us that Missouri lost? I'm not sure. Either way, we're into the Sweet 16. Anything can happen from here on out. We can lose right now for sure. I don't expect it. But it could for sure happen. These are all good teams. These are all neutral courts. You have a bad day, you go home. North Carolina and Purdue in the Sweet 16. 19-point victory. Duke's still alive, playing Wyoming. Uh, I'm not sure who if they – random task, we'll take a look. When we get to the Final Four is always when I check out the entire tournament as a whole. All right, so uh, here in this region, I think this has got to be Raleigh, uh, North Carolina and Georgetown, it's straight up chalk. Iowa State looks like they're headed to the Final Four, beat out New Mexico State. But the Tar Heels and the Hoyas. Whew, Elite Eight action. Can we keep it going? 
We're, we're on a mission for back-to-back -back national championships, but we've got to get through the Georgetown Hoyas, the home of Allen Iverson, the home of Patrick Ewing, John Thompson. But we got a lot of history on our side as well. North Carolina, Dean Smith, Michael Jordan, James Worthy, Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson. I mean, it's, you can go forever and ever. North Carolina and Georgetown in the Elite Eight. Oh, my God, we got smoked. Charles Spurgeon went off. Derek Person went off. Oh, we got we got beat by 13 points. And it ends in its tracks. What could have been a really good season. Two bad losses on the road in the regular season. Won an ACC championship. And then just stopped in our tracks in the Elite Eight. So still can't even go back to back. Can't even win a national championship. Can't win neutral court games. Let's see how that one went down. All right, so neither team really did anything from three. Where was the difference in the game? Oh, personal fouls. 26 to 16. So, I mean, I guess 10 fouls can do it. Seems weird. But, I mean, look at the free throws. Look at the 14 for 20. Like, not only did Person go 9 of 11 from the field, but also 14 of 20 from the free throw line. And then Spurgeon went 10 of 18 from the field, 5 of 11 from 3, Along with 7 of 11 from the free throw line. Couple of real, really good players there. So we go down in the Elite Eight. Which sucks. I was really, really thinking we were good there. They're a two-man show, but we couldn't beat them. We, we had all the depth and... You know, the, they only had two guys, and you know what? Both of their two guys were on. And if that's what happens, you lose and you go home. That's why even as – it's so ridiculous for, like, to put up, you know, back-to-back three-peats, four-peats, undefeated seasons, all that. It's so crazy because, like, stuff like this just happens. All right, so we check out Rally. Uh, looking at it overall, eh, Pitt beat Temple. I guess that's a mild ups. Farley Dickinson over Syracuse in the first round. You know, at least we're not Syracuse here. In Chicago, we got Iowa State all the way out. Beating, oh, look at that. Look at this. Oh, okay, so NC Asheville beat Nevada, the two seed, and then lost to Missouri, who came out and lost to New Mexico State. New Mexico State had already upset Washington, so... A uh, lot of interesting stuff. Long, roundabout way to get around to saying the number one seed is moving on to the Final Four here in the Chicago region in Nashville. Let's see, we got UC. It's pretty much chalk on that side. Nothing crazy on this side. And UC moving on. Uh, I think UC's got it. Oh, yeah, UC's got to be the favorite to win it all at this point. Uh, yeah, so Wyoming... Wyoming came out, lost to Duke. Wyoming didn't. They, Wyoming performed exactly as their seeding would have suggested they would perform. All right, so I mean, it's two ones and two twos here in the final four. Not anything crazy. The crazy thing is that we're not in it. So we'll play this out and see how it goes. It's frustrating. Don't get me wrong, it's very frustrating. But, you know, that's why you, you just got to load it up with talent year over year and try and try and try and try again. That's why we say we try to break records. Like, there's no guaranteed way to break records. You see moving on to the national championship, I didn't see who they're going to play. But this Leo Bush looks like the real deal. Let's see if he can win him a championship. Nope, Iowa State. 
All right, let's check out these awards. Leo Bush, Leo Bush, Chris Newman, Tim Moore. So Iowa State and UC rack it up. They gave me the coach of the year. All right, that's weird. I've had much better years. Uh, nothing for first-team All-Americans. Nothing for second-team All-Americans. In the ACC, Claggett and Matt Jordan, both second-teamers. Irvin Eloy, one of the guys that transferred out of North Carolina, is a second-teamer for Pittsburgh. And on the first team, we got nothing. Individual awards, nothing. And this is probably where you know we didn't... We had a ton of complimentary talent, and we didn't have like one overriding talent. And maybe that's maybe that's where we fell short. And maybe that changes next year when we bring in uh, three of the top twelve freshmen in the country. You never know. Ninety-five to all right. So we're down to ninety-one prestige. Okay, it's all right. We'll get there. Delete all this. See who wants to hire us. I'm sure there will be somebody. <clears throat> yeah, quite a few people. Notre Dame wants us, even though they knocked us off. Villanova on probation. No thanks. That's an easy skip. Oh, Louisville was hiring. Not going there. So one place I will not go in this safe. Staff hiring. Am I missing any staff members? Uh, two year nope. So we should be able to blow right through this unless one of them gets hired. You know, Chuck, uh, I always, I often see, ob honestly, the national coach of the year does not win their conference coach of the year. Like, I've won national coach of the year like ten or twelve times, and I only think once or twice was I also the conference coach of the year. Which is weird, but uh, it's you, you play indie games long enough, and you just get used to um, uh, what's the word? Like these little, you know, these little things that are just unique to this one thing. There's a word for it. I'm just missing it. So facilities or budget? Eh, they're both pretty good. Hard to decide. We'll go facilities, I guess. Because budget, I don't think we spent enough to have a shot. Denied. No surprise there. All right. Let's get into this next year, get a sneak peek of what this team is going to look like. Get through transfer, see if we lose anybody. Yeah, weird quirks. Quirks is a good word. But there's just always some of that kind of stuff in um, in all games, really. I mean, I, I say indie games, but there's weird stuff in AAA games, too. So, you know, I mean, it's... It's not reality. It's you know, coding and ones and zeros and all that good stuff. So uh, there's always going to be something that's imperfect or unrealistic about it. And you just learn what those things are and you can either roll with it or you can't. I don't see any problem with it. It's a unique characteristic. How about that? like where you just come to love the imperfections yeah Chuck I would do that too if I was trying to raise the budget Chuck says after he fills the scholarships he just wastes the rest of his budget uh, but my budget's almost a half million dollars a year I don't really have to do that and it's just um, uh, not burdensome but I'm too lazy to do it at this point I don't need to do it so I just don't
and I got 225 here. I can just go premium national, premium American East. Call it a day. Ah, shit, we had transfers. Oh, wait, we didn't? We just lost all of our walk-ons? Hold on. Wait. <laughs> First of all, this looks like a little bit of a small roster. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Only ten guys on that roster. But the lowest rated one is Rashawn Gomes at four stars, and everybody else is four and a half or more. We got four inside players, three small forwards, only three guards. So guard is going to be our weakness this year. But the nice thing is with all the extra small forwards, we can roll one of them down if need be. So that's four on the inside, three wing, three guards. I guess that's about the best you can do. I would hope for another guard, but, you know, it happens. This could be another really, really good team. Really tough to find playing time. Let's go check out these transfers, see if there's anything worthwhile. No, I mean, really, there's just not. We, <clears throat> we only have three scholarships available for next year. I would like to put two of those to guards and one player on the inside. And I don't feel like messing around with these transfers at all. As per the usual, I never do. So let's skip right on past them. Yeah, the freshmen have been added. Yeah, it showed... I mean, we had the, uh, the, the the small forward, the power forward, and the center. All three of them were been added. But we, not only did we lose the guys that went pro early, I think all of our walk-ons also graduated. So the game is going to generate us here about five walk-ons. Uh, wait, ten, maybe three walk-ons. I think you usually have 13 scholarships and two walk-ons. It might generate five walk-ons. Yeah, the, the freshmen are in there. So Now, the nice thing about this team is they're going to be more and more experienced. So we can take where we had it like 60%, 65% on the uh, play usage. We can bump that up to like 70% probably. All right, so we got this guy as a walk-on. He sucks. This Earl Hughes. Hmm. Hmm. Dupree. No. Knight, no. Wilson. Watson. Watson. All right, so the game gifted us a decent walk-on center here. Now, I don't know that we need it. Obviously, Jordan starts. Obviously, Gomes comes after him. But Watson gives some depth, so that's fine. That's cool. God, we're going to lose all of our centers next year. It's going to be terrifying. That's a terrifying thing when you play at this level is you never know who's going to leave early. In any given year, you could just have a crater in your roster. You never know where it's coming. All right, we already have all this information. We already know we got the number one recruiting class. We can delete all of this, go to summer travel, 
and then we'll take a quick look at the draft here before we uh, clock out for the night. That's exactly what I want to do on camps. Probably should have grabbed like at least one more regional camp, if not two. You don't you don't need more than fifty thousand at the most to recruit with. Forty thousand is a luxury. You can get by on like twenty five to thirty. Especially in single player. Multiplayer, I'd rather have 40. Single player, you can get back on 25 to 30, no problem. All right, let's check out the draft, see where these guys went. Leo Bush, I told you, that dude was a monster. Aaron Harris, so even though Notre Dame sucked. And look at that. Not only did Notre Dame get the, the benefit of playing us without our starting center and then without the guy we put in his place with the double injury, but they had Aaron Harris at center to take advantage of that. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Where are we at here? Eddie Grove went eighth. Daryl Willie, 16th. So a little bit outside of the um, lottery. But, you know, with the injury, that makes sense. Charles Serpin just barely played for us, but... Uh, had a ton of talent. He's going to go 17th. Would have loved to have had him for a couple more years, but you know you, you can't keep you can't just hoard all the talented players. The NBA is going to want some of them eventually. Did we have any other? Nick Rogers went in the middle of the second round. All right, so we had four guys drafted. Not too shabby. So one final look at the roster. Uh, Obviously, we're looking. I mean, we we've got three outstanding guards, uh, but not a lot of depth. We we'll have to rely on walk-ons for any kind of depth issues. Very deep and talented at small forward, no issues there. So that's a nice thing is we can shift those guys down to guard or up to big man as needed. And then on the inside, we actually do have a decent amount of depth. We got four really good scholarship players as well as, well as the walk-on here, Brian Watson. So let's get this quick save before I forget. And, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you all stopping by. I'm super sorry I didn't get around to it last week. I made it a point to get in this week, even though it's a little bit later. Um, you know, we got up and we streamed, and we gave it a valiant effort. Injuries ate us up a little bit. Uh, we didn't have the best of breaks, but uh, we're, we're back and better than ever and ready for the next stream, number one preseason again. So um, I had an absolute blast tonight. I hope you guys did too. I'm going to cut it off right here, but thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.